training parents to talk, cheating at card games, digging graves, making jams and jellies. Hey, what the hell? You freaking kidding me? Hey everyone, I'm Ben Schneider, and last time on this series we talked about Jeopardy, and how it takes remarkable consistency over multiple appearances to be a millionaire on that show. On Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, however, all it takes is 15 questions over a single appearance for a contestant to claim the million dollar prize. Now winning a million dollars on the primetime version of Millionaire was far from impossible, as proven by the fact that 9 contestants won the top prize in a span of less than 2 calendar years. If anything, some members of the British press thought winning the American top prize was too easy. But that's a video idea for another day. The syndicated version, however, was a different story. In 17 seasons, Millionaire only produced three more top prize winners, two of whom came in the very first season. And the third? Well, it took a special tournament designed to guarantee a millionaire to make it happen. So why the difference between the two versions? What caused this disparity? Well, let's find out by taking a look at why winning $1 million on syndicated Millionaire was almost impossible. I've already talked about Millionaire a little bit on this channel, but honestly, this video is almost going to serve as a remake of that one. And while I don't love looking back on things I've made in the past generally speaking, in this case in particular, let's be honest, I really had no idea what I was doing. But if you really want to check it out, here's a card with a link to do so. Anyway, as I mentioned in the intro, the primetime version of Millionaire hosted by the late great Regis Philbin hardly had a top prize winner shortage. Despite the format originating in the UK, the US version became the first worldwide edition of Millionaire to crown a top prize winner when John Carpenter claimed the million just three months into the show's run. Eight others followed in the next two years, but ABC's over-reliance on the program led to its cancellation. And by the summer of 2002, the show's US future was in doubt. Of course, the story doesn't end here, though. Millionaire was reworked into a half-hour daily syndicated show, giving the program a lifeline to stay on the air. Meredith Vieira took over as the host. I am so excited to be here. Welcome to the new weekday version of Millionaire. And while the series was never as popular as its primetime counterpart, 17 seasons is still far more than the vast majority of shows end up getting. So despite the constant format changes and, of course, the lack of big winners, you can't really deny the syndicated show had a good run. But one thing was noticeably missing from that run. The ability to win the top prize. For a show literally called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you'd think there'd be a realistic chance at tuning into the show on a random weekday and seeing someone win the million. But the reality is that for most of the syndicated version's run, this really wasn't the case. Right off the bat, Season 1 saw two contestants win the million dollar prize. Kevin Smith became the first contestant to win the million on the syndicated version on February 18th, 2003. Less than three months later, on May 8th, Nancy Christie became the second making her the first and to date only woman in Millionaire's U.S. history to win the top prize. Both Smith and Christie's wins were pretty improbable given how their games played out. Despite using his phone-a-friend on the $500,000 question, Smith went against his lifeline's advice and risked $218,000 on his gut instinct. Let's ask Dr. Jerry Errico. He's an old pal. Dr. Jerry? Mm -hmm. Okay, our friends at AT&T are going to help us get Jerry on the line. Five. Four, I think it's three, Library Congress, 80%. 80%. Were you leaning in another direction? Yes, ma'am. For some reason, I was thinking the CIA. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I, I think it's a CIA B final answer. Oh, geez, Kevin. I'm so glad you trusted your gut. You got it right. <laughs> Smith then took some extra time to make sure he was reading the million dollar question right before locking in his final answer and winning the game. A meet inspector final answer. I'm so excited. <laughs> Christy, meanwhile, had to have a lot of things go her way, as she had used up all three of her lifelines by the $16,000 question. But a combination of trusting her own gut instincts and getting questions that almost seemed tailor-made for her allowed her to claim a top prize as well. I've actually been in two different productions of Fiddler on the Roof, because I'm kind of a ham too. Tevya is a milkman C. That's my final answer. Can you 
sing anything from Fiddler on the Roof? <laughs> if I were a rich woman. <laughs> yeah, hey, you're getting there. You got 32,000. Thank you. Most scenic route I can think of, if it were me and I were taking it, and I'm gonna go ahead and go with one of these anyway, because what have I got to lose? Nothing, it's a free That's guess. right. I'm going to say, because I think it's the prettiest route I can think of, would be Los Angeles and Seattle. I'm going to say D. Go for a final and see what happens. Okay. I gotta tell you, it's getting noisy in that classroom back home. The kids are screaming, you got $64,000. I have my mother's volume of this. It's blue, red imprint on the front. Secret of the old clock, D. And that's my final answer. Look at you go, you got $125,000. I used to work at the Department of Interior years ago before I got married. My old boss was from California, where at one point he'd even been uh, fish and game commissioner and thanks Ray the answer is C Grunion final answer I can hear them in Tulsa <laughs> Nancy is two away from a million dollars again I've got a gut feeling but oh, that is a lot of money mm. what's your gut feeling gut feel is the Opera House. Let's give it a shot and go with the Sydney Opera House B. And that's my final answer. Oh, Nancy. Oh, gosh. You're one away from a million dollars. I lived in Washington, D.C. for a whole lot of years. I used to be a part of a performing group. And we opened the show one time with a diptych of American Gothic, and I was, you know, the lady and all of this. That was his sister, but the farmer was his dentist, C, and that's my final answer. We have our first woman as a millionaire. Now, unbelievably, this would be the last time we'd see the confetti fall a millionaire for over six years. A few contestants did come close, including Armand Kajigian, the very next contestant after Christy. Armand, you look like you're in a state of shock a little bit. Are you okay? What, something happened while I was backstage? <laughs> oh, a little something, uh, a little millionaire stuff. I'm gonna say Euchre. A, final answer. Viva La Vegas, baby, you got 500,000. Kajigian worked his way up to the million dollar question before walking away, in what would ultimately go down as the best game by a contestant immediately following a million dollar winner. Jeff Gross, who had appeared on the British version a few years prior, took home half a million dollars in season three, and Lynn Payne picked up half a million dollars in season six, the final season before the clock format was introduced. But nobody came closer in the first six seasons than season five contestant Ogiogas, a neuroscientist who used his own research to guide his game strategy. D, assistant cough, final answer. Oh, Ogie. Okay. You could have had 250, instead you have 500. Yeah! And it worked perfectly, until he got to the million dollar question. Ogus ultimately knew the answer, but simply didn't have the guts to risk $475,000 on it. It's too much at stake. I'm gonna walk. See the answer so you know. Ah, it was William. Ah, damn it! Ogie? Ah. Ogie? Oh, damn it! Uh, you know what, Ogie? In our book, it's five hundred thousand dollars, but you are one in a million. You are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. And the three and a half year drought would be extended as a result. Season 7 passed and the clock format produced a handful of quarter million dollar winners, but that's it, nothing more. Ken Basin actually nearly broke the drought in a primetime 10th anniversary special on August 23rd, 2009, but instead became the first contestant to answer the million dollar question incorrectly. No, it's not the final answer, you just lost a lot of money. It's Fresca! Fresca!
Ken leaves with $25,000. At this point, producers realize that it's been far too long since the top prize has been won. Simply lowering the difficulty of the questions to something more in line with the primetime version would have had a good chance of fixing that issue, but that would be way too easy and obvious of a solution. So what does Millionaire do? They create a special tournament. Yep, that's right, we're going to do everything we can to guarantee a million dollar winner rather than waiting for it to happen organically. I wonder where they got that idea. Hmm. Anyway, with that, the million dollar tournament of 10 is born. The 10 biggest winners from the first 9 weeks of a season will be entered into the tournament and invited back in November for a chance to answer a million dollar question. If they get it right, they become a tournament leader. But if they get it wrong, their winnings are reduced down from whatever they originally won to the $25,000 safe haven. The first two contestants take a look at their questions and elect to pass on answering them, leaving with their $50,000. Here's where we meet the number 8 seed in the tournament, Sam Murray, the third and ultimately final millionaire from the syndicated version. Murray actually had first appeared on the show the day before the tournament was scheduled to begin, so he's just happy to be there. Murray's given a numerical question that I'd argue is actually on the easier side, particularly by the syndicated version standards. Six billion now. You got to figure out the attrition rate of how many people die. How long lifespans have been since biblical times? Six billion. Fifty billion would be two. One trillion would be too high. With only twenty-five thousand dollars to lose. Murray decides to take a chance, and it pays off for him. Uh, what the hell? B, 100 billion, final. No, it's not 100 billion. It's, it's actually 106.5 billion, but we rounded it down to 100 billion. <laughs> now, it's a really good thing Murray had the guts to go for it. Because one by one, every seat ahead of him elects to pass on answering their own million dollar question. Despite the fact that pretty much all of them would have been right had they taken that risk. But they didn't, so it comes down to the number one seed. Jahan Shamsuddin, who had won $250,000 and therefore had a lot more money at risk. She too elected to walk away. And with that, Millionaire had its first top prize winner in six and a half years. You know, $250,000 is a lot of money. And I like Sam. I didn't want him to get the money, but <laughs> I do like Sam. I'm gonna walk away. You believed it was Mountain and Wales, chose not to go for it. Can we see the answer, please? It was Mountain in Wales. But you know what? You have $250,000, and Sam, Mari, come on down here. You have one. Now, I would love to know, if Murray had chosen to walk away, what would Millionaire have done? Think about it, a tournament that promised a million dollar winner almost didn't get a single one of their top 10 contestants to take a chance on the million. But I guess that just speaks to the flaws in a hastily thrown together format. At this point, Syndicated Millionaire only continued to fade into further irrelevance. The show tried introducing the shuffle format to make the first half of the game more unpredictable, but combine that with a ridiculous jump the question lifeline and going through four hosts in four years at one point, there was no way the show was going to establish an identity even if they did find a million dollar winner. But why couldn't they find another million dollar winner? Why were there so few winners in 17 years? Why was the first season the only season that produced a top prize winner without the help of a special tournament? Well, for one thing, the questions were undeniably harder and more obscure than they were on the primetime version. I mean, what was poor Chip Eston supposed to do here? Have Ben Franklin's Drinker's Dictionary memorized the same way he had the Abbey Road cover memorized? Eston and Josina Reeves were the only two who made it to the million dollar question after the Tournament of Ten, both doing so in Season 12. Reeves was able to save both her Jump the Question lifelines for the second round, so she elected to go for it as she only had to risk $75,000 to gain $900,000. But again, when you compare her million dollar question to some of the primetime ones, You'll find that while the primetime questions aren't exactly easy, a good trivia expert with enough general knowledge would still have a shot at knowing them. Whereas with Josina's, again, you might as well be picking cases on deal or no deal with this one. Now that's not to say that there weren't other contributing factors outside of millionaires' control here. There was, of course, a global financial crisis in 2008, and it's understandable that contestants might have been a bit more conservative in their gameplay in the years that followed. The less likely they were to take those risks, the less likely they were to win big. But still, if not even Jeopardy goat Ken Jennings could win a million dollars here, 
Well, that should tell you that doing so was almost impossible, if not actually impossible. Thankfully, Millionaire and ABC seemed to learn from this when they revived the show in 2020. As David Chang was able to become the first celebrity contestant to win the million and the first overall in 11 years. But the primetime revival's been parked for a year and a half now, and the syndicated version is long gone at this point. So, whatever happens in Millionaire's future, and believe me, they will bring it back eventually, is anyone's guess. Hopefully, the question difficulty will be a bit more in line with primetime standards whenever we see this show again. Don't tell me the networks can't afford another moment like this. He won a million dollars!